When friendship ends. Please get your <laughs> authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to James chapter 4. Today we are going to be looking at the first five verses in James chapter 4 in an expository manner. I am simply going to be sharing with you what the Lord shared with me as concerning the first five verses in the book of James chapter 4. Okay, so please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. I expect you to follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at. Okay, check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Be a Berean. Okay, and follow me along. Now, there are a couple things we need to remember when it comes to the book of James, okay? Number one, Romans chapter 15, verse four, okay? All things which were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, okay? That's more in regards of talking about the Testament, okay? Number two, uh, 2 Timothy chapter two, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. And number three, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Well, well, yeah, Brad. Well, yes. Yes. The book of James, doctrinally, in a whole, is not written for us today doctrinally. Okay? There are doctrines that cross dispensational lines, such as what? The doctrine according to godliness. Okay? If you are of the Lord, if you are of the church of the living God, even within the uh, Old Testament, when, excuse me, when you are the Lord's, you are expected of the Lord to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Okay? All right? That, uh, that was said in Isaiah. What was that? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And Revelation chapter 18, three different dispensations. The Lord said, come out from among them and be ye separate. Okay? So the doctrine according to godliness, which crosses all dispensational lines, uh, is to be separate other than that. Okay? But what happens? What happens? We can become a little too friendly with the world sometimes, can't we? Like I shared in the previous video that was uh, done yesterday on the backup channel. The other day I spent over two hours, uh, about two hours of my life looking at short videos uh, about dogs and cats and cooking things, you know, cooking uh, videos. And I was sitting here, Brother Alexander's room, on, um, you know, the, the cursed hell phone. And it's like, it's like, Brad, what are you doing? It's like, whoa, put that down. As we are going to be seeing things get far worse and worse. Like, how many of you are bordering near poverty? How many of you don't know if you're going to be able to pay your bills? Yeah. And in these times of hardship, unless you're a superstar and do begathons all the day, um, when you're in hardship is when you ought to be on your knees more, searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. 
Going as the Lord would have you to go. Doing as he would have you to do. Waiting and hoping in his mercy. And during that time, though, the devil and his angels can come up with so many distractions. And how easy it is for us um, of the Church of the Living God to hop on this YouTube here and lose yourself for hours and be distracted. And the question that we need to consider going through this together, how much of compromise, how much of the world are you taking in or allowing for yourself to enjoy that might make you an enemy of the Lord? How friendly are we being with the world? I was for, and because think about it, the devil and his angels, when they can distract you, right? You go on YouTube, unless you're dealing with that accursed algorithm, but you go on YouTube, hey, you can find anything that soothes you, right? Anything that distracts you. The things of the world speak smoothly to you, always in a soft, condescending, innocent tone. The, the world is waiting to just be so friendly unto you and to give you the things that take you away from what you ought to be uh, focusing on, right? The question is, and the only ones, one that can answer this question for you is you and the Lord. Because there are three that knows what's going on with you and worldliness with you personally. The Lord, yourself, and the devil and his angels. Yeah. So, like I said, when we're going through this, you examine your own self and consider and ask yourself, how much am I engaging in worldliness and perhaps making myself an enemy to my Lord? Am I behaving like the enemy, i.e. foolishly? James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. We've got a lot of scripture we're going to be going through today. This is not milk, okay? So, James chapter 4, verse 1. And you also, like I said, got to remember about the book of James. The book of James is written for the Hebraic Jewish people for during the time of Jacob's trouble doctrinally. There are doctrines that cross dispensational lines within the book of James, yes, but in a whole, the book of James doctrinally is not written for us today. Okay? You got to remember that. James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members. In these five verses, note the word lust. We will deal with that much a little later. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. What? Is that an awkward silence for you, huh? Second Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 5. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of God, huh? <laughs> Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not, not this to condemn you. For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. 
For we four, when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Fighting what? Fighting what? Okay. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your, of your lusts that war in your members? Hmm. Members such as your flesh. It's amazing when you look at it how much of this gets in the way of everything. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 15. Turn right to it. How about that? Verses 29 on to verse 32. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every, every hour if we are not serving, serving the risen Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Hmm. And why stand we in jeopardy every, every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Do you die daily? Or are you reviving parts of that old man and behaving as if you are an enemy of the Lord? Look at this. If after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. What advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Fought with beasts at Ephesus. Hmm. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts? that war in your members, war in your flesh. Hmm. And interesting here about verse 32, go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. We need to have war on our flesh, brethren. We really do. Excuse me. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 12 on to verse 15. Beasts at Ephesus. Hmm. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Is he talking about the four-legged kind or the two-legged kind? But these, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 15. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption hmm. and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. Hey, like Oscar Wilde said, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, make yourself even more odious unto the Lord. There you go, yeah. Beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Bosor, who loved 
the wages of unrighteousness. And the wages of sin is death. So Paul, um, after the manner of man, fought with, Bruce, with uh, beasts at Ephesus. Was he talking about the four-legged kind? No, he was talking about the two-legged kind. Natural brute beasts, unregenerated, not saved individuals. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 under verse 6. Now this we've got to remember. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, fleshly. So often, the enemy, the devil, can lull some of us into fighting as they fight, carnally. And see, we are not supposed to fight like that. And if someone comes up to you and is going to rob you and put a gun into your face, and that's stupid if they put a gun to your face that close, because at that kind of distance, you know, you can move. You know, yeah, a, a pull of the trigger is a little quicker, but you got a guy with a gun that close to you. The odds that you can at least defend yourself from the first shot is pretty good, okay? Defend yourself, okay? Depraved indifference is a sin, okay? Defend yourself, okay? If someone punches you, do, do your best to get away. But if you're in a corner and some guy's going to beat the snot out of you and put you in the hospital... Defend yourself and put them in one first, okay? But, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly. This is not a fleshly book. This is not a carnal book, okay? This is God's book. The other books, such as the uh, NIV and all those fake, uh, no, all those Bibles, yeah, those are books of men. They are carnal books. This is spiritual. This is God's book. Okay? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. Hmm. Things that are dug into the ground, heels dealt in, uh, dwell, you know, digging into the dirt. Fortified. Not going anywhere easily. Casting down imaginations. So these strongholds are in the imagination, thoughts. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Now think about that. Think about that. Think about how we can go about and establish strongholds in our lives as the church of the living God when we allow ourselves to distraction to sit there <laughs> and look at videos on YouTube and waste two hours of your life. Or whatever else it may be. Reading the newspaper. The newspaper. Yeah. Hmm? Watching Hollywood movies. Reading books that you shouldn't. Listening to music that you shouldn't. Okay? You can establish strongholds. Strongholds can be established. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? But what does that say? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Have you, what have you made in your life a stronghold? Hmm? Well, Jesus is my stronghold. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you got to remember, this walk is not a walk of force. But you have to make the right choices. Hmm. 
What have you established or maybe perhaps reestablished as a stronghold in your life? Hmm. And see, these strongholds can exalt themselves, it's themselves against the knowledge of God. How so? Oh, example. Was I um, thinking, seeking the knowledge of God while I was watching a little mocha pom Pomeranian dog run around in circles and cats going, ah, and weird stuff like that and, and looking at those food videos, huh? No, it was exalting itself above the knowledge of God, that mystical trance that can happen to any of us, any of us. It, it, it works, it's very subtle, and it works just that quickly. And hence, you can establish yourself a stronghold with that. Hmm. See how dangerous it can be? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Have you ever been watching something that you shouldn't be? And I'm not talking about the obvious grotesque things, just something that seems innocent, but like, for example, promotes feminism? Promotes pedophilia, which is virtually anything Disney, okay? Which promotes sodomy, okay? All right? <laughs> Have you ever been watching something like that or engaged in something like that where all of a sudden it's like, where is, where is the Lord in my thought that I'm allowing myself to view or to do these things that I shouldn't? And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Turn it off. Shut it down. Step away. Back away. Get into the scriptures more. Pray more. Sing psalms more. If weather permitting, go out the outside and walk more, if you can. See, because when we allow ourselves to give ourselves over to these distractions, which the world with its happy, smiling face and oh-so-sweet words and demeanor are willing to offer you, all you got to do is go to the world to get it. And it's that quick for you to do it, isn't it? Hmm? Isn't it? All right. And also, too, we have to remember Ephesians 6.12. Okay. We have to remember Ephesians 6.12 with this. Okay. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We are not to fight in fleshly means as our enemies do. Okay. You look at how the enemies attack us, the church of the living God. It's always in a fleshly, schoolyard-esque manner, okay? And they use many fleshly devices to attack. We are not to attack that way. We are not to fight that way, okay? This is the, the sword of the Spirit, okay? This, this, the Scriptures, does more damage than any other weapon known to mankind, okay? This can also heal. This can also encourage. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? But we've got to remember Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And in Romans chapter 7, in Romans chapter 7, Paul talks about Paul talks about this quite deeply, so deeply that I am persuaded 
that a majority of even of the Church of the Living God doesn't truly get it. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 on to verse 23. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Hmm. Now, you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Uh, the Lord dwells within you, yes. But see, flesh is sinful. Flesh is sinful. Why? Because flesh comes from the earth. Okay? Flesh comes from the earth. We're dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, okay? The body that we have is earthly. The, the new body that we will get will be heavenly, okay? All right? So while on this earth, we who have a spirit, soul, and body, and the Lord lives within us, okay? There is still that constant battle between the spirit and the flesh, okay? You have to remember that. And as Romans chapter 8 tells us, sin is here. Flesh is sinful, okay? For the good that I would, for the good that I would, I do not, not sin. Not sin. At every given moment that you can, give unto the Lord. And there is no one, not even Paul, could do that perfectly. Could get every waking second unto the Lord. Why? Because this gets in the way. Okay? For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay? While we are on earth, there is no such thing as sinless perfection. That's impossible. Because if you could be sinlessly perfect, then you would be just like God, wouldn't you? And hey, look at those charismatics. Look at those charismatic. Well, I'm not a sinner anymore. <laughs> yeah, why don't you light up that pipe a little bit more, huh? Yeah. Charismatics like Joyce Myers. Like, I didn't get uh, my head until I knew that I wasn't a sinner anymore. And they, that these people believe that ye are gods because you can speak things into existence. Yeah. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now, who is the inward man? The hidden man of the heart. That be the Lord. Okay? The inward man. I delight after... What does that say? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. John talks about this, okay, which we discussed in uh, one of the previous videos. Um, the Holy Ghost, the Lord in you, is not going to lead you and guide you on to sin. You cannot, it's, the Lord is not like, well, you want to do something that you know the Lord forbids. But you're going to be like, well, I talked about it with the Lord and he's okay with it. An example, an example, here's an example. Let's say a loved one of your of yours died, and you want to remember them by getting a tattoo. This this, this is some of the stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to get a tattoo, okay? If you have tattoos, and then the Lord saves you, you're forgiven for that, yes. But then again, you need to hide that stuff, okay? You need to hide that stuff if you can. I mean, I know of there are people who have tattoos on their neck and even on their head, okay? And stuff like that. Yeah, you know. But, you know that's wrong. But in order to justify it, 
You'll go through every hoop and everything you can, right? And you'll uh, make yourself friendly with the world in order to find an acceptance with it. And then you'll say stuff like, well, I, w I talked about it with the Lord and he's okay with it. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. The Lord is never okay with you doing what is contrary to his word. He isn't. Okay? He isn't. All right? He just isn't. Now, put that example into another frame. Whatever it is pertinent for yourself. And then sit there and think, muse, what am I justifying in my life that I know the Lord hates? Huh? What is there? Hmm? Well, there's not really anything. Hmm, praise the Lord. You're an exceptional one then. Praise the Lord. But most of us who, you know, struggle daily with this, there always seems to be a little something in there. But I see, look at this, another law in my members. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your, of your lusts that war in your members? That was James chapter 4 verse 1, okay? But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Again, showing you and proving to you that sin is here. Flesh is sinful. Okay? Okay? Hmm. Hmm. So James asks, in a dispensation where the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, is not a permanent resident, only in the 144,000 Jews, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, again, like it was under the law, okay? From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts? We'll deal with that later. That war in your members? Verse 2, okay? Verse 2. Ye lust, second time for that word. We'll deal with that later. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill hmm. and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Don't worry, we'll deal with this asking thing here in a minute. But, look at the verse. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Haggai. 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 Haggai is right before Zechariah. Zechariah is right before Malachi. <laughs> Malachi, okay? So, you find, you go to the new, where it says the New Testament, go that way, you'll find Malachi, Zechariah, Haggai, chapter 1, verses 7 on verse 11. Thus saith, I love this, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your way. With financial ruin happening, uh, teeter-tottering on the brink of financial ruin, many of us, and with the, the obnoxious, overbearing political flabber that we're going to endure, especially here in America this entire year, 2023, and all the disgusting Jesuit tactics that you're going to see right before your eyes, and our American countrymen being imbecilic, falling for the great white hype. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. We're going to get bogged down, brethren. 
We're going to we're going to be we're going to be going through some stuff that's really going to tempt us. And when we are going through these hardships, we need to abstain from all appearance of evil because it's so easy to hop on YouTube and lose yourself for a couple like sometimes sleeping to some is an escape while others are sleeping and some are escaping. OK, but sooner or later, you got to wake up and deal with reality. OK, or reality is going to deal with you. OK, and the world that Satan wants you to accept is not a real world, but a fantasy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our father, he is reality. And he's going to make you deal with him. Him who is reality. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways. Remember, all things that were written for time are written for our learning. Uh, this is a different dispensation that this is in. Uh, we're looking at this for instruction and in righteousness, okay? Go up to the mountain, meaning go up to the Lord, and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Now, this is talking about an actual temple. Yes, today your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We have talked about that in length, okay? So, we need to consider our ways. ways. This is instruction in righteousness. We need to go to the Lord and bring ourselves, okay? Yeah. How many, how many of you have... Uh, on occasion, done the mechanical thing where, okay, you get down on your knees to pray, okay, but yet you're going through the manipulations, but there's no substance there. You're reading the scriptures as a mechanical device because you know you want to, but there's no substance there. Hmm? A dry time, one has uh, uh, so colorfully put it. Hmm? So we are to go to the Lord and bring ourselves and build the house. Work out. No, 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 no. Study to issue thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Study the scriptures. I know so many of my brethren. Not all of them. Unfortunately, a majority. That don't spend adequate time in the scriptures. Adequate time. At least read a chapter of something a day. You should do more. But at least a chapter of something a day, as the Lord would lead you. But see, the mechanical could happen. Hmm? What happens also? Ye lust. Hmm. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much and lo, it came to little and when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste and ye run every man unto his own house. His house that lieth waste. Now this, again, dispensationally, doctrinally, is making reference onto an actual physical temple. But how many of you, of your relationship with the Lord, has been altered? Because you might be being a little too friendly with the world. Hmm? The Lord is there wanting a relationship with you. Okay? But it's not a relationship built on force. Okay? You have to make the right decisions. So, is the house, the relationship with the Lord between you and Him lying waste because of your lusts? Because you've been distracted by the worldly things? And you're being a little too friendly with the world. Hmm? 
Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. For all seek their own, not the things that be of Jesus Christ. But yet, you, you still seek him sometimes, don't you? But is it for his glory or for yours? Ah. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Ye ask, oh, ye lust, and ye, have, uh, ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Hmm, there's that asking again. Go to Judges 20. Judges 20. Just two verse, uh, uh, a couple of verses, three verses here. In Judges 20. Judges 20, verses 26 on to verse 28. Now, this that we're looking in at Judges is when the children of Benjamin, the, the, the man and his concubine, okay? You can read about that uh, from Judges 18 to the close of the book of Judges, okay? Uh, a man and his, uh, goes to get his concubine. He stays at Jebus, and the uh, uh, Benjamites or not at Jebus, uh, they, I forget where they stayed, but they stayed somewhere and the children of Benjamin came and wanted to rape him and the man gave the uh, his concubine onto them and they abused her all the night and the man went and cut her up into pieces and sent her throughout of all Israel, okay? And Israel gathered themselves against Benjamin and went to fight against Benjamin. And, there, and you will read in this, that Benjamin went to the Lord on a couple of, uh, uh, not Benjamin, but the children of Israel went to the Lord on several occasions. But on the occasions that they went up to verses 26 on to verse 28, they were lacking in uh, going up to the Lord. How so? Uh, one second, please. Okay, sorry about that. Look at verse 18. And the children of Israel rose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God. Okay, they asked counsel of God. Yes, they did. But look at it. And said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. So they went to God and asked, Hey, who should go to battle first, right? And he said, ben, uh, Judah shall go up first. What happens? Mm -hmm. Verse 21. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gebeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. So Judah went up first. They, they asked the Lord. Okay, they asked the Lord. But yet they still got defeated and uh, went home with the, their tail between their legs. Hmm. Why, you might ask? Could it have been something to do with the way they were approaching the Lord? Okay? Now, look at verse 23. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord. Okay? Now they're weeping. Okay? Until even. So, verse 18. They go to the Lord. They ask counsel of the Lord. Okay? And he said, Judah go. They get beaten. Pretty badly. Second time. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even. Now they're they're crying. Oh, woe is us. Okay? And asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Well, they wept this time. Okay? They wept this time. And the children of Israel came near again against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth 
against them out of Gebeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again 18,000 men. All these drew sword. Wow, so they got beat again. Now check this out. Do you think their hearts were in it? When they first, uh, the first two times, they wept. They asked counsel of the Lord. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And the second, and they got beaten. They went to the Lord the second time. They were weeping. They got beaten. Huh. Hmm. Twenty-six on to verse twenty-eight. Now, then I'll now note this. Look at this. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there for the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So, well, 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 let's let's finish this. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, "Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease?" And look at this. And the Lord said, "Go up." For tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference between the three things that we just looked at? Hmm? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. So, so what was the difference here? What was the difference here? First time they asked. They asked. Praise the Lord. Yes, they did. And the Lord's like, okay, shoot them. But they get beaten. They ask again. They get beaten. They go back to the Lord weeping. They get beaten. Then they go to the Lord. Then they go to the Lord. Weeping. And they sit there. Wait on him. Wait for him. And fasted. Turned everything. They dropped everything. And had their eye focused on the Lord. And offered burnt offering and peace offerings before the Lord. Hmm. Um. 2 Samuel 24, verse 24, just one verse, what this is driving at. Okay? 2 Samuel 24, verse 24, just one verse. Come on, fingers, work with me. Awkward silence, huh? <laughs> and the king said unto Aruna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David brought the threshing floor of the oxen. And so David brought, bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. The threshing floor where the angel of the Lord, this was after David behaved foolishly and got all high and mighty on himself and wanted to see the number of the armies of Israel and boast about how powerful he was. And then his heart smote him after he did something foolishly. It's like, oh, wow, Lord, I shouldn't have done this. And the Lord offers him, it's like, okay, here's three choices. How shall I punish you? Oh, wow, huh? And the angel of the Lord was smiting because he said, let me fall into the hands of the Lord. And the Lord sent a pestilence. And the angel of the Lord was uh, about to go on. And the Lord said, stop, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. And it was at the threshing floor of Aruna. 
Okay? But David said, I will, Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. Easy believism teaches that you just believe. Repentance is a work and, you know, prayer is a work, blah, blah, blah. Just believe, save yourself. And it costs you nothing. Those of us who are saved, we know that being broken of ourselves is very costly to what? Our flesh, our pride. Being broken of our self-righteousness is costly to us. Taking, manning up and taking responsibility for you putting the Lord on that cross, that's costly. Why, why do you think so many people, why do you think Especially with the easy believism guys. Why do you think they skip over scriptural repentance, which is brokenness of your self-righteousness? Why do you think they say prayers of work? Because it's costly. It's taxing when the Lord breaks you. See, those of us who are saved, we know this, okay? It's costly. It's taxing. To man up and take responsibility for you putting the Lord on the cross. And oh, it's very frightful to fear the one who can put you into hell. Hmm? That's something that a lot of people don't like to talk about. And also too, also too, you got people who are against eternal security who are saving themselves by what they do. See, the cost is at another angle there. It's costing them everything, but it's because they are doing it themselves, see. See how that works? How warped and twisted that is? Hmm? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, Yet ye have not, because ye ask not. And now, think about these charismatics who say, just believe and receive, ask and it shall be given to you, but hey, give us a thousand dollars, sow your seed, right? Think about that, okay? Think about that. Think about these guys who are against eternal security, who do not rightly divide the word of truth, okay? You, you got to keep the commandments. You got to save yourself by keeping the commandments, which we do not do today to be stay, be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? Think about that. Okay? It's what you're doing. It's what you're doing. All right? Verse 3. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your Lusts. Three times now the word lust has appeared thus far. You've noticed that. You might say to me, well, God is answering all my prayers. Really? Really? God, God answers prayer. Yes, he does. But so does the little G God. Okay? You know, this is not part of the notes. But in Psalm 10, Psalm 10, and see, it's with this where the charismatic, the um, prosperity devils, and even, even easy believism, and these uh, Hebrew roots people and stuff like that, and guys like Mark the Messenger. This, you know, Psalm chapter 10. Uh, where is that? Psalm chapter 10. One second, please. Okay, beg your pardon. Psalm chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. And Satan is right there, has been given the ability to answer some of the prayers of these Christians. Think about that. Who's answering the prayers? Link in the description box for that, okay? 
for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. You ask and receive not. Well, I asked the Lord for money to get a good car. I asked, Lord, if you give me a lot of money, I'll spend it for you. Okay? And they do things like that that they think that they're doing for the Lord. And what happens? I give lots of money unto charities. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all I possess. I feel like Paul. Oh, because of all that the Lord has given me and I have given back unto him, look at what has become of me. You see? You see? Who's, who's offering your prayer? Who's, who's answering your prayers? Hmm? Who's answering your prayers? Hmm? Remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And the Lord could allow the devil to say, okay, you know, I'm, he wants this thing that he knows that he shouldn't get, but he's saying he'd give you, go ahead, go ahead. But save his life. And then it falls to pieces before you. Or you go down that slippery uh, slope and fall into pride. Or you stay bogged down, never truly saved, because you think you're saved, because you just believe, and Satan is giving you everything your little wicked heart desires. John chapter 6. See, easy believism. People who say that you got to keep the law today. All that is false has at its center what? Flesh. Flesh. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verses 22 on to verse 27. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one wherein to his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, and after that the Lord had given thanks. Yes, this is after the miracle of the loaves. Uh, about 5 and 20, uh, uh, that's the wrong one. But this is after one of the miracles of the loaves, where uh, 5,000, okay, the 5,000 men were fed. This is after the miracle of the Lord, of the of the loaves, okay, where loaves of bread were miraculously feeding 5,000 people, okay? That's after this, all right? When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, his disciples, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled, whose God is their belly and mind earthly things. They didn't go to the blessed sore, for the sake of the blessor. They go to the blessor just for the sake of the blessings. And when that, dear friend, when you are the center and be all of your little religion there, who's answering the prayers? Who's answering the prayers? You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. 
that ye may consume it upon your lust. Well, Brad, uh, the Lord has given me everything I've ever prayed about. And look, I have a mansion. I have cars. I never have to uh, deal with uh, bills. And hey, Brad, how about I give you some because I got so much. <laughs> no, thanks. No, thanks. You go ahead and keep it. Yeah, no, thank you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. And where is that in Philippians? Uh, Philippians, I believe that's Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, go there really quick. Uh, verse 18 and 19 in Philippians chapter 3. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, flesh, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You, you know, if you're going to boast about how the Lord has uh, given you all that you've asked for in your prayers, and that uh, he's, even, he's even making your dreams come true that you had as a lost man, <laughs> you need to really consider who's answering them prayers. But Isaiah 58 Isaiah 58, verses 3 on the verse 7. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his, he is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Now you look at that verse for our instruction in right righteousness. Um... Have some of these bands of wickedness gotten hold of you? Hmm? By the ease of distraction, the willingness that the world is there to give you, to distract you from the knowledge of God? Hmm? Have you made yourself a little too friendly with worldly things? Hmm? Hmm? Maybe it's time we break the yoke on some of this, huh? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked that thou cover him. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. These are all works, Brad. Yes, they are. This is our instruction in righteousness. You've got to remember that. You've got to remember that. Okay. Today we are saved by grace through faith. Not by keeping the law or anything like that. Okay. We go to him broken, contrite and fear him, and in fear of him we call upon his name, and may he save you. Okay? Only the Lord knows if you are actually truly broken. Because there's a difference between being broken and being sorry. Okay? Many people are sorry, but how many are truly broken? And see, that brokenness is costly. But hey, Remember, Paul uh, counted all things dung 
So at the first you think, you know, it's like, well, this has cost me everything. But see, that's all done. Because now you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you and seals you. All these things that you once had are nothing. Because you have the all of things. Our Lord Jesus Christ. And Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. We want verses 4 on to verse 7. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? Like we looked at in Judges there. First two times, it wasn't unto the Lord. They were still the, the focus. But that third time, when they wept, they sat before the Lord, and they offered offerings unto him. Unto him. Okay? <laughs> I'm 48 years of age. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. You know, when I'm on my knees for an hour trying to get up, it's like, ah! <laughs> okay? You know that where it says much study is a weariness of the flesh? Yeah. Especially when you're reading the scriptures. Okay? That's costly. Why? Because it taxes this, praise the Lord. It's that battle of spirit and flesh. Okay? Your flesh, my flesh in prayer, in an hour of prayer, oh, I got to jostle my knees, my feet get a little tingly, okay, my shoulders hurt, you know, you get the little rug burn on your nose, okay, physically taxing, okay? It costs us something, okay? It's not about my comfort and prayer, okay? The comfort, the joy is the dialogue between my Lord, my Savior, and myself in prayer and the time we spend together in Scripture. But all sin is here. Sin is in the flesh, okay? Sin is here. And you spend two hours, two and a half hours in Scripture Wow, your flesh is what? You get a little antsy, your stomach grumbling, okay? Costly. Costly. And also, too, if you are a little too friendly with the world, more so than you should be, how even more costly and painful is it that when you are in prayer, the Lord's like, hey, you're, a little, you're getting a little too carnal here. So what happens? Oh, you went from an hour to a half hour. From a half hour to 15 minutes. To 15 minutes to 5 minutes. To eventually where you don't pray at all. Oh. You go from 5 chapters. Down to 3. Down to 1. Down to none. When you're a little too friendly with the world. And the Lord is in you. And he wants you out of that. <laughs> like I said, people, like I said, the only one that could answer this is between you and the Lord. And, and remember, Satan is very well aware of what's going on between you and the Lord. Now, see, what happens is people will come and twist this about this asking okay ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts okay when you are the center be all of things and are at well lord if you give me the money i'll spend it on you yeah so you can go around and then boast about all these great things that you have done for the lord I've seen this on YouTube. I've seen this in person. Okay? And praise the Lord that I'm kept in squalor. 
Because you know what? If I had those things, I would probably end up like that. And I don't want to end up, up like that. We got too many examples of people who have been blessed and are going to rub it into your face. And it makes you want to puke like, bleh, like that puke. Doesn't it? But see, the devil comes in with this asking because the devil wants you to ask him. What does he say? All this will I give you because it's given unto me. He shows you all the glory of the world, of the kingdoms in a moment in time, like maybe an hour spent on YouTube surfing. Hmm? Fall down and worship him. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 on verse 8. See, and they come to this and they twist this. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, where is this located? This is in the Sermon on the Mount. Serve, uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount, which is the Constitution, which is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. It's all works uh, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. And during the kingdom of heaven, the Lord's going to be on the throne at Jerusalem. You're going to see him with your two eyes. So, people are going to be asking personally the Lord things. Ah, you got to remember that. And you got to remember, brethren, the Lord that does answer prayer, whether it's yea, nay, or no answer, and you got to remember a no answer is also an answer. The Lord answers, the Lord always answers prayer. The problem is, and it's not a problem, but the problem that, as we perceive it is not according to the way you want it, right? Again, look at the guys in uh, Judges. They were going to go out. And the Lord's like, okay, send you, uh, send Judah. They get their tail whip and come back with it between their legs. It's like, who should go out again? Like, should we go out again? It's like, go on. And they get beaten. Okay? Because they, they were the center thereof. But it took them getting beaten down a couple times. It's like, oh, wow, okay. You're right, Lord. We've been a little too... What would what do you want us to do, Lord? Never mind us. Okay. You see? See, Christianity and all these work salvationists like Mark the Messenger and that Bible flock box guy and the uh, the easy believism heretics like grace ambassadors, okay? Stay away from them devils, okay? And all the runoffs of the easy believism heretics like that. Okay, just examples. Okay, they are the center of what they are doing. Okay, they are seeking the Lord, not for the Lord's sake, but because of they saw the bread and were filled. They're seeking the blessing, not the blessor. And that's what they offer you. And, and see, in that realm, who's answering the prayer? Who's answering the prayer there, buddy? Go to Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. Okay? That's during the kingdom of, that's for the kingdom of heaven. The Lord will answer your prayer, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's not the way that you want it to. He'll answer the prayer. Um, it's when your prayers line up with his desire. And see, so you got these devils. Well, God wants you to be rich so you can go about and boast yourself. There's a reason why he says not too many. Uh, we're we're going to look at that. I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 on to verse 26. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So see, 
and believe and receive. And what does prosperity people tell you? Believe in your heart that you're going to get a thousand dollars and you'll receive it. But see, you're asking for a thousand dollars so you may consume it on your lust. No, I'm asking it so I can pay my bills. Hmm. Are you? Are you? So then, even thus, you're going to the Lord just for that alone and not for who he actually is. You're going for the loaves, not that the fact that he is the one who provided you the loaves. See? You see, you see that deception? You see how that's working? You see how Satan does that? Yeah, I, I'm going to this one ministry and I'm having them pray for me because I want to pay my bills. Yes. Yes, I want to pay my bills. So that's the only reason why you're going to the Lord. Even though, even though it's not for you, like, you know, you might have a wife and kid or children, many. It's like, I, I, I want to pay my bills. I'm got to pay your bills. Yes. So you're going to the Lord just for that. And see, the devil comes in and twists this and turns it into a matter of you and what you want. You see how that works? Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever thing, whatsoever thing, so ever ye desire, so a car, so a hot wife or a hot husband or lots of money so I can give all this stuff and at the end of the day, I'm a pretty good person. Look at what I've done. You see how, see that trap? See the subtlety of it? But see, there's a catch here. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Okay? And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses, but if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Aha! We have here what is called a clue. Such as, Mark chapter 11, Christ had not died, buried, and rose again yet. Third day, according to the scriptures, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. And during that kingdom of heaven, it's all works. So, that is not to be missed. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, friend. Okay? He's saying, believe that you'll receive these things. Okay? Because during the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be able to see the Lord. So when you go to the Lord and ask him for something, you got to believe that he'll do what he says. Like, if it's according to his desire. See? But see, it's followed up with, Unless you forgive someone, you're not forgiven. That's a work. Even easy believism devils will tell you, and they're right. That's a work. That's a work. See, the kingdom of heaven is all works, friend. Okay? You, you know, you're believing. What are you believing? You go to see the Lord personally. It's like, Lord, my harvest is a little short. I, I need help to feed my family. And Please, Lord. Uh, please, can you can would you help us defeat during the kingdom of heaven? You're right before him, seeing him with your eyes. You might say, "It is done. Go home." It's like, okay, I saw the Lord and kingdom of heaven all works, okay. But there again, during the kingdom of heaven, if you do not forgive, neither will you be forgiven. See, that's a work. Today, in this dispensation, whether or not you forgive someone is not doesn't affect your salvation. You can, of the church of the living God, have a grudge. Your walk will be messed up, but your salvation will be intact because it's not your salvation. You see how that works? Christians come to this and twist this all the time in order to get something out of you. And they make you the center and be all. You go to the Lord just so what he can give you, not for he himself. See, that's how they twist.
twist it. That's how they twist it, their brethren. First, first John chapter five. First John chapter five. First John chapter five, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. First John chapter five, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. These things have I written unto you, excuse me, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Right there, you want to have a conversation with a Catholic? Here's where you start. Because to a Catholic, it's the sin of presumption to know that you're saved, like the scriptures say. Good way to start a conversation with a Catholic. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That. Okay, look, don't look at me. Look at the verse. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Well, God wants you to be rich, wealthy, happy, healthy, and all that stuff, does he? Mm. Does he? Paul left uh, one guy, uh, Melitum, sick. Elisha died of a sickness. Mm. You know, in sickness, you are more dependent, even so, on the Lord. Hmm. And if you have the best that this world offers, you can easily become self-dependent. Hmm? Or, excuse me, you can easily become self-sufficient, not Christ-dependent. Hmm? And we, just, we already saw that the Lord abhorreth the covetous. What happens when you get all that money, when you get all that stuff, huh? What happens? I've seen it myself many times. They boast themselves and it becomes a, uh, an issue of their pride about all that I have done for the Lord because of all he has given me. They're boasting themselves through the Lord. You see how that works? You see how that works? You know, and, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Another one that these people like to twist. And you you got to remember this, brethren. You got to remember this. Okay? You got to remember this. Giving unto brethren for necessity is one thing. But doing it for the benefit alone that will accrue to you is you doing it for your own gain. And not because it is of what the Lord would have done. Hence, you are the center be all. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 on to verse 9. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Yes. Okay? You reap what you sow. You reap to the spirit, well, you'll reap spiritual rewards. You reap to your flesh. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. Every, every man according as he proposeth in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And how do the church buildings do this? They, they tell you about tithing. Tithing which was there to upkeep a physical temple, which today in this dispensation we do not have. Okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, like uh, Sam Smith once said, uh, you give your 10%, that's what's required. It's when you go beyond your 10%, 10%, uh, 10% that's when you're really giving. That's, that's heresy. That's evil. That's wicked. Okay? Tithing is not a requirement for us today. Okay? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? All right? You gotta be aware of that. Okay? And verse 8. 
And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. See, we minister, people minister for necessities, not greeds. Verse 9, as it is written, and 10, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And see, we give, we give unto others for necessity, okay? For necessity. Hey, sometimes people give gifts just because, hey, I, I want to give this to you because I want to give this to you, okay? Okay, it's just because I want to. But we are to provide for others of the church of the living God their necessity as you can. Now, see, right away you think of money. And money is scarce nowadays, okay? Sometimes in necessity, a brother or a sister needs a shoulder to cry on. A brother and sister needs a place to say, a stay. A brother or sister may need a rebuke, may need some correction, may need encouragement. Okay, there are a myriad of ways to supply the needs of the saints. Okay, and when we are supplying the needs as the Lord has given us um, means to do so, however he has, okay, it's fulfilling his will. Hence, cheerfully, you are doing the Lord's will. See, you are not the center of it. Okay. Being a cheerful giver is giving because you know it's what making the Lord happy. And yes, you will receive a benefit for it. But that is not why you are doing it. Just so what accrues to you. Okay? That is not why you are doing it alone. If that is why you are doing it, you're doing it for your lusts. Does that, does that make sense? Ye ask, uh, verse 3 in James 4, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Verse 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Well, I'm not a friend of the world. <laughs> with some people, you sure could fool me, huh? Are you being a little too friendly with the world? First hmm? John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Hmm? We're, uh, very familiar verses. Verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All this will I give to you if you bow down and worship me on media, advertisements, advertisements, okay? The devil flashes you the whole world in a moment of time, especially on social media sites like YouTube and Facebook. Hmm? Well, I don't love the world. Hmm. Sure can fool me. You think you're fooling the Lord? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. That's interesting that that's named first. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but uh, is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And we are to abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, go to Luke chapter 6, uh, 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Some will say, well, and I say unto you, 
Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye, f when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. So see, Brad, okay, we, we are to be friendly with uh, mammon to a point, right? Hmm. Luke 16, before the Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now let's let's read a little context. Verses 1 on to verse 12. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Okay. Uh, the rich man, the Lord. Okay. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now, you hear that from the Lord. You've messed up. You've wasted your time, the precious time that he has given you, time that you ought to be in prayer with him, out there uh, being a witness unto the lost, making him happy, not yourself. But your, your happiness, your joy comes when you're doing what the Lord will have you to do, see? Okay? What did the steward do? Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. Notice this. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Hmm. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. So give up half. Don't pay the full amount, but give up half. Give him a little something. Not the whole shebang. And the guy's like, oh, wow, just half? Okay, sure. So see, if he would have gone to that guy and requested that, hey, you owe my Lord what? A hundred measures of oil? Okay? Pay, pay him his hundred measures of oil. Okay? But no, in order to pacify the guy who owed, he's like, just 50, just half. See how that works? Then said he to another, And how much sowest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. Okay? So a little bit more than half, but not the whole tale. See? See? Look at this, verse 8. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. You did well. You did, did a good job. Because he had done wisely. Wisely according to his Lord or wisely to the world. Um, a rule of business is you do not upset the customer. Okay? All right? That's a rule of business. The customer is always right. All right? So here's this guy who is about to be removed from the stewardship. And he goes to people who owe his Lord, and it's like, okay, give half, give a little bit more than half, don't give the whole tale of what you owe. Hence, trying to pacify his Lord a little, but also pacifying the, he's playing both sides of the argument, you see. I'm trying to. And the Lord's like, hey, you did a good job. You did. Because you made them happy. Because you didn't take everything that they owed me. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generations wiser than the children of light. How so? What is this wiser? What is this wisdom that is being referenced? Is it the wisdom of the Lord, which is the fear of the Lord? No. It is that wisdom that is of the earth, which is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Do you see this? And now... Verse 9, and I say unto you, see, because we of the church of the living God today for our instruction and righteousness, uh, owe no man anything, 
but to love one another. You don't put yourself in debt. Okay? Number one. But if we do owe someone something, like Paul says in Philemon, I'll lay that to my account. I will repay. We pay you back. See? But see, in the full tale, okay? If I owe you 50 bucks, it's like, brother, sister, I don't have it right now, okay? But if I owe you, when I get it, I'm going to pay you back full amount. Not like, oh, here, here's a little. And then you go on. How many of you have tales of that? Hmm? Hmm? Right? Right. See, we, you know, children of light, Number one, we're not in debt. Number two, if we owe you something, we're going to pay you back full. But the children of this world, hey, just slip, just give them a little to pacify them. That way you can do whatever, whatever, and maybe give them a little more. But hey, at least you're making an attempt, right? 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 This is why we are admonished, owe no man anything. Because we as the church of the living God today, we are obliged to, if we owe, we better pay. Okay? And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the, uh, of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And this is the what? The unjust steward? Hmm. And notice that the unjust steward took little from the people to only pacify them more so than getting the full tale that his Lord was owed. You see how that works? Verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give that which is your own, such as the unjust steward? Okay, he was being removed from the stewardship because he was unfaithful with his Lord's stuff. So what did he do? He goes to the people who owes his Lord, pacifies them because he knows he's getting kicked out so he can be taken care of by them because, hey, remember how you owed him and I came to you and, you know. Notice what the unjust steward did not do. Have you noticed that? Hmm? When the Lord came to him about throwing him out of the stewardship because he had wasted his goods, what was the first thing he did? He went to other men. He went to man. He went to flesh. Say, hey, just give half. Making them happy. Did he go to the Lord in repentance? No! He didn't. Why? Because he was the center of his be all end all. He didn't go to the Lord at all in repentance. Saying, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. Uh, okay, you're going to throw my, but please don't cast me, cast me aside, okay? Remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? But please, don't cast me away. Please. I, okay, you're going to take... Uh, please, I'm sorry. I love you. Forgive me for being selfish. Forgive me for being carnal. I repent. Please, Lord. Please. Did he do that? No. No. He went to men. What happens when something devastating happens to you? Do you go to the Lord? Remember, YouTube, uh, media, whatever, provides a nice little distraction that lulls you to sleep so you can escape your reality for a little while by watching stupid pet videos and food videos or whatever, whatever videos or whatever floats your boat instead of dealing with the reality of the situation. Are you a little too friendly with the world? Hmm? Hmm? The unjust steward didn't go to the Lord. He went to men. He went to the world. 
And that was quite a problem. And because he did that, because he covered his own at rear end, the Lord's like, hey, you did what? You, yeah, just like the serpent. Like a serpent, yeah, you, you did a good job. You didn't get right with me, but yeah, now they'll take care of you. Yeah. That explains verses 10 on to verse 12. Okay? The unjust steward was unfaithful to the Lord. Well, he was faithful to those people, wasn't he? Why? So his own rear end would be protected. Yeah. Yeah. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verses 21 on to verse 22. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. The rich young ruler. Good master. What shall I do to inherit the eternal life? The Lord's like, why call me good? There's only one good. That's God. The rich young ruler. He saw a meal ticket. Didn't see the son of David. Where the blind man who said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus like, whoa, someone's calling me by who I am, the son of David. But yet the rich young ruler, rich young ruler, hey, what can I do to make my life even better? And the Lord's like, you know the commandments? He's like, I've done all this. One thing you lack. You love this world a little too much, son. Disassociate yourself from that. And then come on. And then he went and and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Wait, let's read verse 23. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the spiritual kingdom of God? Ooh. Well, this is cutting you, isn't it? Me too. Me too. But see... What happens? What happens? Like some of you might be uh, debating right now in your little head. What happens? Well, we, we got we to gotta be doing things, right? We got to... Uh, Colossians 2 verse 8. <laughs> what happens? Satan comes along. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Oh, justifying. Oh, oh. When it comes to justifying things that you know the Lord hates, that you ought not to be doing, it suddenly turns people into philosophers in order to justify it. Okay, I don't want, I have to make a mention of it in this shoe. Look at the Roman Catholic uh, Helliday Christ's Mass. And look at how Christians went and justified it. They became quite philosophers about it, didn't they? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And that's where they come in. They come in and it's like, hey, well, we, we got to do this. We have, we, we have to do this, right? All right, we can't totally be separate from the world, right? We, we, we got to do some things, right? Right? That's what you're saying? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 on to verse 23. For though I be, and it's like, they say, well, like, for example, well, we got to be like the world in order to win the world. We got to mingle ourselves in. We got to, you know, hey, Paul himself, right? He became all things to all men. So what you're saying, Paul, you know, in order to witness the Sodomites, became a Sodomite? Hmm? Hmm? Paul, in order to witness unto cannibals, became a cannibal? Paul, in order to witness the Demokamis, became a Demokami, and vice versa with Republicans, huh? First uh, Corinthians chapter 9, 
verses 19 on to verse 23. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Meaning, Lord, use me however you want. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, that's what I'm going to do. Okay? The Lord is the head. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. So, does that mean that Paul was keeping the law to stay safe? No. And you read in the book of Acts, chapter 21, what happened when he decided to go and do those things under the law to, uh, to eventually offer an annual sacrifice, okay? All right. Didn't work out too well. To them that are without law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, okay? That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Paul, number one, in verse 19, gave himself over unto the Lord. Lord, you are my boss. You say, I do. Okay? Not for salvation. Works that we are called on to, which he addresses in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Okay? But he said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. So the Lord made him to be all things unto all men. He put him amongst these different people to be an ambassador. Paul himself didn't compromise and become like them, but he became as them, meaning that he was sent onto them in these situations to be an ambassador. The Lord put him in all these situations after he surrendered unto the Lord. Hey, do it with me, whatever you want, okay? That's what that's talking about. Paul didn't become those things in order to witness to them. No, the Lord put him in those situations to witness to them as his ambassador, okay? But also, what's the other one? What's the other one that they come up with to, you know, to uh, argue this? Well, we got to, we got to do the worldly things. They go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses uh, 9 on to verse 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Now this is true. Yes, yes. Because we are to be ambassadors for Christ onto fornicators, covetous, or extortioners. Yes, and idolaters. Yes, that is what we are called to do, to be ambassadors for Christ. That's what we are called to do. The good works that we are called to do once the Lord saves us. Okay? All right? We're not to just sit there idle and doing nothing, hoarding the Lord to ourselves. We are to share the Lord with others. Okay? Yes! Yes! But that does not mean that we become like them in order to reach them. Even atheists, like we've talked about. You know, in those of us who are truly saved and we deal with atheists, most of the time... Atheists will at least acknowledge, yeah, you're, you're different than what these Christians are. Yeah, you, you are. Because most of the Christians, uh, look at that Babylon Bee. I mean, how can you tell those guys from anything else? Huh? Oh, just because they say Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be different. Okay? There ought to be a difference in us. All right? Yes. We are in the world. We're not of the world. It's when you start becoming of the world, yet when you, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Adulteress, being an adulterer is cheating on someone you love, right? 
Aha. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And this is not just relegated to social media and stuff like that. What about that? Or what about that? Or what about that? Or what about I'm depressed, so I'm going to eat a 15 layer cake. In the world, it's like, hey, we all, we, a little doesn't hurt. We all have weak moments, and we do. In your weak moment, where are you going? Eat, eat that souffle. It'll make you feel better. But for some of you, it doesn't. Smoke that cigarette. It'll help. But it's killing you. Go ahead. Drink a little. Hey, just don't get drunk. And then one day you'll sit there, have three glasses of wine. You're sitting there feeling good. And then you'll get up to go do something. And it's like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> hmm? Go ahead, look at you. You know, isn't that cute? That little cute uh, cat there and that bunny. Isn't that cute? A little doesn't hurt. Besides, we, we got to be part of the world, right? No. We're in the world. We're not of the world. Again, this is a question that only you can answer. You and the Lord. And be aware, too. The devil is aware of this, too. What in your life has, constitutes, basically, friendship with the world? Is there something in your life that you're being a little too friendly with in the world? With the world, excuse me? Hmm? Verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. So if you got someone who calls themselves a brother and they're behaving just like the world that you are witnessing onto, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Because if he's a brother, it's like, well, hey, God's grace. Don't worry. Hey, I can do all this because I just believed I'm saved. I'll go to heaven so I can go ahead. I can have my cake and eat it too. No, you can't. It doesn't work that way. And here's what a lot of people like to overstep. Uh, For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Don't judge. Don't judge. Hey, don't judge me. Dude, you're doing something that you shouldn't as the church. Don't judge me. Dude, you're saying that we got to keep the law. That That's wrong. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. For what have I to do to judge them that are, the, them also that are without? Do not you judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Hmm? We are to be in the world, not of the world. But see, the danger is, how of the world are you becoming? Because you got to remember, brethren, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. But are you being conformed? Making, you know, being friendly with the world too much? Huh? And a little too much is too much. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that to? You're supposed to be an ambassador. But yet, if there is no distinction between yourself and that worldly Christian, there's a problem. And see, that's something that you have to make the right decision about. The Lord in you will chasten you, guide you, and lead you into all truth. But he's not going to force you to make the right decisions. 
And one day when I sat, you know, when I was sitting here on the phone, wasting two hours of my life, I was a friend of the world that day. For that short period of the time, I was acting like an enemy to my Lord. And yes, in something that seemed so innocent. Why? Because my mind wasn't on the Lord. And those distractions and these things, brethren, are going to increase, 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 and increase the more. And you got to, and we have to remember. Now, again, you also got to remember that we are fallible, that we're going to make mistakes. Yes, that's what Romans chapter 7 is all about. Okay? But you got to remember Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay? And Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is in which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 18, Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You know, when the Lord saves you, old things pass away. All, all, all things become new. You're a new creature because the Lord lives within you. But you have to make the right decisions. Okay, you're not going to, it's not a relationship of force. Because that's basically what? A raping. Isn't it? Okay. Now there are some things that we, we fall into. Um, not fall into, we make the wrong choices. But sometimes some of us will go back to that old neighborhood that we left. And pick up something from that old neighborhood that we thought we had put away and should stay put away, but you bring it back to the surface again. And what happens? What happens? What happens? Oh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 22. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog, male, Return to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed, the female, was washed to her wallowing in the mire. We all make mistakes. Okay? No one can walk this walk perfectly. Even our apostle Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, couldn't do it. Okay? But see, that's what Romans chapter 7 is all about. That is what Romans 7 is all about. Verse 5. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 4 again. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whatsoever therefore, or whosoever therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain the Lowercase s spirit that is in us, that dwelleth, dwelleth in us. Uh, do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Lusteth to envy. Open rebuke is better than secret love. But who is able to stand before envy? Hmm. Lusteth. Go back to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 4. On to verse 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 4 on to verse 7. Wherefore, my brethren, Ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, 
that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, Lord K says, and not in the oldness of the letter. Oldness of the letter is not saying don't read the scriptures. Oldness of the letter, the Old Testament law. Okay? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay. I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, look at this, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. Think about it. How are you making yourself a friend of the world? By covetousness, the lust of the flesh, which we all fight with. We all battle with. And you got to remember too, brethren, Romans chapter 3, verse 19, just one verse. Now we, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. What is this talking about? First Timothy chapter 1, the purposes of the law, which that wicked devil marked the messenger. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to verse 11. But we know that the law is good if a man will use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, and them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. You're not saved. Guess what? You're under the law. <gasps> because the law is there to tell you what is evil. Okay? All right? And in the dispensation of the law, where the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident, it was faith and works. You kept the law in your faith that God would honor you and call you righteous for doing what he said according to the law. Okay? All right? All right? So, as we already read in Romans 7, we, because we have the Lord within us, who kept the law perfectly, okay? The Lord did. The Lord is in us, having that circumcision made without hands, the Lord in us, we are, un we are set free from the law that the law, because why? The law is there to tell people what is sin. And what else also serveth the law? Galatians chapter 3. You know? I, this this isn't this stuff is gonna keep coming up worse and worse and worse. Attacks on eternal security and people wanting to keep the law. Okay? Because all those have at their base you at the center. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed, our Lord Jesus Christ, should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. And now we'll skip a little here and go to verses 23 on to verse 29. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You're no longer under the law of Moses. We are under the law to Christ, which is given to us in Romans chapter 13, okay? Which is absent of keeping the Sabbath, by the way, okay? Which is absent of keeping the Sabbath. All right, uh, let's continue to verse 29, okay? 
For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? And also, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16, on to verse 21. But this I say then, walk in the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, capital S, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 7, that he can't do that perfectly. You can't. You can't. Okay? That's why we praise the Lord Jesus Christ, because we are wretched men. So then we with the mind, we serve the Lord, but with, uh, you know, we, 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 instead of butchering that, go to Romans chapter 7. I don't want to butcher that. I don't want to butcher that. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Okay? You're going to sin every day. It, it's inevitable. You can't help it. Okay? It's the flesh. Okay? But see, the more that you are in the Lord, the less you are going to do. But see, not even Paul could do that perfectly 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And those who say that they can are lying to you. Those are the ones who say, well, I don't sin anymore. So then you're like God. You go to hell. You lie. You lie. Okay? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. I, what does it say there in verse 4? In James chapter 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Hmm? Adultery is the first thing mentioned. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, spiritual and you know what you make yourself a friend to the world you can exhibit any one of these why do you think we are to abstain from all appearance of evil we can't do that 24 hours a day 7 days a week no we can't no we can't we all make mistakes but see the more time you spend with the Lord the more you're going to know of what he, choices he wants you to make. And when you make the right choices, things will go well with you. And when you make the bad, wrong choices, sometimes they will go well with you too because of the correction that will come and what you will learn from your failure. See? See how this works? But we got to remember something too. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. The spirit that in is, is in us lusteth to envy. Okay? Now, God is a jealous God. He made you and he wants to have a relationship with you. Okay? But that's not the spirit that's being talked about in James chapter 4. It's not. Because number one, it says the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. Hmm. Hmm. The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. And that spirit is the spirit of what? Hmm. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. 
So repented grief, not that God was a sinner. He regretted, he repented that he had made man. Okay? Before the Lord saves you, that spirit of man, that spirit of man which is a, a, the spirit of the world, we were made of the dirt. Okay? You're lost. You're a Christian. Okay? <laughs> All right. One of these church building Christians, all right? Or a Christian who's saving themselves because they just believed or by the works of the law, okay? That spirit in you is the spirit of man, which is the spirit of this world. And that spirit is, doesn't come from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, okay? That's a lowercase s, okay? And you got to remember, this is from the book of James. During a time where... The Holy Ghost is not a permanent resident except for the 144,000 Jews. There is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble except for the 144,000 Jews. Okay? So when he says there, do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The spirit in us that lusteth to envy? covet you want what they want and want what they got hmm? think about that brethren think about that because you got to remember okay romans chapter 3 verses 10 on verse 18 romans chapter 3 okay the least favorite verses of all scripture unto the easy believism heretic okay verses 10 on verse 18 Revelation chapter 3. Well, this changed now. We're, we're better people. We have evolved. We're better now that Jesus is in the, you know, in the world. Really? At the beginning, Genesis, that the thought of man's heart is evil continually. Hmm? Okay? And we're different today now, huh? Man is different. Uh... As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that is righteous is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, what is this talking about? We addressed this in another video. Okay? This is a born again. Okay? Born again. All right? This is talking about the Holy Ghost that dwells within you. The Holy Ghost that dwells within you cannot sin and will not lead you on to sin. Okay? That's what this is talking about. You can reference this with Romans chapter uh, 7, verses 18 on to verse 23. Okay? That's a reference that you can make with this. All right? Okay? In this, verse 10, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness of not, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? So the spirit that lusteth in us, that dwelleth to envy. We have the spirit of the Lord within us. But see, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh is how Satan tempts us. The flesh is how Satan tempts us. And if you're not saved, you don't have the Lord in you, obviously. Okay? So you are the be-all, end-all of your world. Satan tempts us through what? Flesh. Okay? Through flesh. 
Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, one verse. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Which is ironically talking about the spiritual climate before, uh, you know, uh, no, that was uh, Matthew uh, 16, not Matthew 23, excuse me, excuse me, never mind that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan! Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And remember, the serpent was cursed to crawl around on his belly and eat dust all the days of his life. And you and I, we were made of what? Dust. The temptations unto God in the wilderness. Satan could not tempt God, but Jesus was tempted. Satan's temptations were all here. To the sinful flesh that Jesus Christ is come into. Okay? Yes. Flesh is sinful. The temptation of Satan was to the flesh. And that's how Satan tempts us. And when you think about it, when you are doing things in a worldly fashion, you're being carnal. You're being fleshly. And that can go over into spiritual matters as well. But it all has it. See, this worldliness has its basis right here. <laughs> For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verses 32 on to verse 35. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shewed you all things how so that so that that so laboring you ought ye ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And as I am able, this is how I give unto others. This is how I give unto you. However you are able, give unto your brethren. And 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 8. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which is according to godliness being separate, he is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. In Colossians chapter 3. We will be done. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 on to verse 7. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, 
Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Not on things on the earth. It's easy to do. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify. Kill. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But are we making are we making ourselves transgressors? Going back to those things. See, a devil cannot inhabit one of the church of the living God. But your flesh is what is the temptation. And when you break it down, flesh is the culprit every time. We've looked at this because I, I'd like us to consider that are some of us compromising a little too much? Are we doing things we know we shouldn't and justifying them because we have, you know, all things are lawful for us? but not all things are expedient. Brethren, times are going to get worse and worse and worse. And in these hard times, that temptation to be distracted from a fantasy world that is given to you in a moment of time will be there ready present. Even when your flesh is weary because you spent a lot of time studying. The world is always there. Hey, spend a little time with me. They, it speaks smoothly onto you and it gratifies your flesh every time. Now you got to remember, we can't do it perfectly every single time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If we could, then we would be like God himself. But consider these things. There are things within your life, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you think you are, there are things in your life that if you sit down and look at it, and you doing that, are you making yourself an enemy to God? And things that I'm doing, am I making myself an enemy to God? If someone come around and say that they don't do, that they don't have any of these things, beware. That's going to be it for this video, dear brethren. Um, thank you for watching this if you do. I hope this challenges you. I hope, um, I hope, I hope uh, some self-examination takes place with this. So, we love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Thank you for those of you who help us. We need all the prayers that you can get, we can get. And we pray for so many of you as well. Talk to one another. Be there for one another. Love one another as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Show hospitality. And give as you are able. However you are able. And a lot of the time, that giving is just your time. Or do you want to watch another pet video? Thank you for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video.